Hello and welcome along to Mondo Chalavet Movies. My name is John and this is going to be my entire collection on my shelves, part 7. Now in the other parts I'll link down below and I've sort of went all the way down this, this section here and I'm getting towards, well this is, I've just done that one and this one is just a short, it's saying it's short, there's quite a few films in there before I get to the Italian classics collection. So the first one on the 88 volts section is spine number 001, it is I Drink Your Blood. That's an absolutely classic uh, title, isn't it? Uh, it's one of those ultra low budget um, splatter films that you used to see back in the day. And uh, it's one of these ones that I really did want to see for a long time. Lovely slip on here. So this movie deals with uh, this gang of hippies that come into this town and they get infected and they catch rabies and they go around uh, attacking people and it's just like, they're basically just like violence uh, amplified. I think they got in a lot of trouble when it came out in 1970. It's quite brutal actually and I think this one um it's got a lovely like I say it's got a lovely print, it's uncut, it's uh the X-rated theatrical cuts and the original director's cut. So you get two cuts of this movie on it, and you also get four controversial deleted scenes, including the original blood-drenched ending deemed too disturbing for 70s audiences. This is a highly recommended um, movie for me. And are these ones here, I'm not too sure if these slips are available. I don't think you can get them in the shops with the slips on. But I really do think that uh, these deserve a, a, a lot of attention. And I do think that 88, uh, I love this, the theory behind this, uh, this, this line that they put out. I don't think it kind of progressed to the level that I thought it was going to progress to. There's a lot of films that I've got in, in other parts of here which I think could have really went into this series, but never mind. Uh, the ones I've got I'm really happy with, so that's Spine Number 1, I Drink Your Blood. Spine Number 2 is a movie that I didn't know anything about and I thought I'll have to get it because this is Spine Number 2, but I think I got up to maybe Spine Number 3 and thought, well, that's not a film. I think it was Joe Bullet. It's a film I didn't really have any interest in, so I decided just to get whatever films I wanted. So a spine number two is Pigs, or the other title of it is um, Daddy's Deadly Darling, which is a little bit more to the truth, actually. There's a lot of pigs in it. There's a lot of violence with pigs eating anything. Pigs eat anything. Yes, that's true. And um, once the pigs tasted blood, no one could control their hunger. And um, it's it's quite a good film because this young girl comes into town and she's at this. Uh, she stays in this hotel where this this man. Uh, keeps pigs in the garden and he kills people and feeds them the pigs and she is uh, seemingly quite a normal person but she's probably more crazy than he is and I've got to admit this is a, this is one of the films that really surprised me never heard anything about it, didn't know about it and I thought to myself this is brilliant I can't uh, I've watched this quite a few times actually it's probably the most I've watched in this uh, in this line the movie vault line next one is spine number four and it is creepazoids now this is from from 1987 and it's it's quite a good sort of one of these monster ones you know you've seen them many times before in the 80s and um, I've got to say that um, it's it's it is what it is it's not it's not brilliant but I did enjoy it I enjoyed it more than I thought I would enjoy it actually and I think is uh, is Linnea Quigley in here I think she might be because um, she seems to be in all of these other ones here and um, could be wrong about that, I can't see a name on here. But it's a Charles Band film, and Charles Band does these sort of monster movies, and creature movies, uh, more more probably cheaply and better than most people actually. So I did quite like this movie, in essence. Next is a movie that, it's a bit of a strange one this, and I was tempted to sell this one because I didn't really like it on first watch. On second watch I enjoyed it more, and it is Dogs. Now the reverse starting here is just basically the same thing, just taking off the eating certificate, which is a little bit lazy. Don't pet them, fear them. Now the story behind this is really actually good. This this uh, town, all the dogs in it go crazy and they kill all the owners, and then they're getting uh, the rampaging through the streets, and everybody's like, you can't go near dogs, man's best friend, and they've turned on you and they're after you. Now that's a great story. The only problem I've got with it is that the dogs in here. Are the sort of little fluffy dogs that you would see and you would never be frightened of like little chihuahuas and there's I think there's a couple of these big Dobermans in it but there's nothing in it that's that's actually frightened in the way of dogs I mean I've got these uh, little fluffy things forming at the mouth and it, it just doesn't frighten you in the way it should do if they've got some real devil dogs in here it would have been a totally different film but I do like it but I think I'm keeping it more for the fact that when I show it to somebody or watch it it's just how mad 
that the dogs, the lovable dogs, are meant to be crazy, absolute man eaters, and they're sure, certainly not. Next up is a real favourite of mine. It's number eight, and it is Dead Time Stories, or as I know it, Freaky Fairy Tales. So it's got a, it's a trilogy of stories, this one, and it's about this man who tells this uh, kid bedtime stories, or dead time stories, and they're sort of spooky, and it goes into the stories and you actually see what he's, he's saying, you know, like, um, that's how they're linked. But the best one in here is the last one, which is uh, Goldilocks, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Now, Goldilocks is an escaped, it, it sort of freshens up the story. Goldilocks is an escaped mental patient, and she goes to this house, and uh, she's a bit of a serial killer as well, thrown into boot. And she's there with the three bears. And there's Mama Bear, Papa Bear, and Baby Bear. Now, baby, these are three um, sort of uh, killers on the loose as well. This family that go around killing people. And it's just a crazy, absolutely crazy film. I've loved it ever since I've seen it. And um, it's for me, I just couldn't believe it had come out. Because I was going to get this from the States, but it was quite expensive. When I saw this, I thought, got to have this. So highly recommend it as well. So the next one is Spine Number 10 in the the Vault series, and it is Body Melt. This is quite a good film, actually. It's got some uh, real good gore in it. It's very um, bloodthirsty and gory. It's got loads of practical effects on which is brilliant. And um, it's it's in the it says in the in the in the sort of way of uh, Street Trash. Now Street Trash, they released it on this series, and I've got to admit it was a very poor quality compared to the the American one which I've got. So I had to let that one go, even though it had a nice slip and all that, and I thought, no, I'm not going to keep it because it's double dip and I didn't need it at all. Every bit of the extras was on the uh, American one as well. I was a bit disappointed with that as well, because uh, I would love to have this in, the, in this, um, this, this collection, but never mind. And um, so, yeah, so it's, it's quite a good film, actually, but it's very much like a trauma film for me. It's one of those ones that's got a lot of comedy in it, them two bodybuilding people, it's just, it's just mad. I can't remember the actual story and how it's um, how they get into this this thing where everyone starts to melt, but it's uh, it's quite a good film actually. And uh, like I say, I don't know how easy these ones are to get. In fact, even with slip covers on. So that's all the movie vault ones I've got. So next up is Anthropophagus the Beast. Now this is funny enough. This is a funny one because it is spine number seven on the Italian class classics collection. Now you may think, well. It's over there, and it is over there, but this that was the first version. This is the second version. It's digitally remastered, and it's a much better picture quality than that one. So if you're ever getting this uh, this version of it, try and get one that is this version, because you will get the digitally remastered um, picture quality on it, and it will tell you here um, that it's sourced from a 2K scan. If you don't get that on the disc, the, the one that you're getting, you will get the other one which is it's all right but it's not as good as this one so remember that discord because that's the one that does have the improved picture quality now personally i love the slip cover as well and personally i love this movie it's one of my favorites even though a lot of people don't like it because it's people say it's boring i don't find it boring at all it was a previous uh, band video nasty it was banned for a infamous scene which is being depicted here kind of and um, highly recommended for me. I just love this movie. Uh, I just love everything about it. It's not that gory, but the bits of gore in it are quite brutal in a way. And you know, you'll know if you've seen it why why it is brutal. The next one is another one from that line. Strangely enough, and it's spine number nine, and it is zombie three or zombie flesh. It is two. Now this one is. I mean, it's over here somewhere. Uh, but this one is not remastered, but it does have an extra disc on, which is not on the one there. So if you want to get the one with two discs, you probably will get the slipcover with it, because it didn't come with that one, I don't think. Um, so yeah, the, the extra disc is just like a bit of an interview uh, about um, Lucio Fulci and stuff like that. And it's not very good, if I'm honest, but I got it. I love the slipcover. It's one of my favourite slipcovers. Um, the whole story behind Zombie 3 and all that I've talked about before, but it's it's so confusing, it's unreal. It's got a big sticker on there, which I'm not happy about, but there's no way I'm going to take it off because it's a soft touch. And if I did, I would wreck the cover, so I've just got to leave it on there. But, so that's, these two aren't really in. They are part of that section, but they're not. The ones to look out for if you want to get the best versions of these from the Italian Classics Collection. Next up is an absolute gem of the film I feel and it is Cannibal Terror. Now this movie is it's 
ultra low budget it's crazy it's daft it's everything above it's it's got these um people in who are supposedly cannibals from a, an ancient tribe which no like nobody's ever seen they haven't seen humanity coming into the place and civilization and they're covered in tattoos and the smoking cigarettes and it's just it's just bizarre that they were kept that in the film itself is more like a sort of rump it's not really um any sort of way the cannibal stuff is just um pretty i mean it's got some gory effects in it but it's, it wouldn't be anything it's got no animal cruelty in it as far as i remember um, but I think a lot of people don't like this. It was a video ban, ban video nasty. A lot of people don't like this movie, but I personally, I think it's absolutely brilliant for what it is. It is so bad it's good as well. I think that's the original cover actually. I do like these co covers that they put on. They don't seem to have put any more out than these two uh, with this sort of sticker on here. It's not a real sticker obviously, but um, I thought they would put a bit more out in this range, but they didn't. I haven't seen to, which is a bit of disappointing. But this one here is exactly the same as Cannibal Terror. A lot of people kind of stand it, but I just think it's absolutely brilliant. It's so bad it's good. The the film itself is ridiculous, but um, as it's one of the better band video nasties that everyone hated, but I quite like as well. It's very watchable, I find. The next one is a is a classic for me. It is 1976 Grizzly. Now this movie here is, um, I do think it's like Jaws with Claws to call it, and um, it's quite brutal. I mean, I, I did see this at the cinema when I was 40 young. I, I didn't think it was going to be 40, 40 young because it was on like a Saturday afternoon matinee, and I tell you what, this gave me nightmares for weeks. Um, I just couldn't stop thinking about the gore effects in here because I've never seen nothing like it. I wasn't prepared for it at that age. So highly recommended. I do love this film and I think it's going to get another sort of remaster in America and get an even better picture quality, even though the picture quality is quite good. The next one is a film that I thought I would like a little bit more than I did and it is Swamp Thing. Lovely picture cover on here, picture cover, lovely sleeve on here. The film itself is actually a Wes Craven film, which I didn't know about. Uh, so the, the movie is, it's not too bad, don't get us wrong, but it's not as good as I thought it was going to be. This is one of the movies that I wanted to see for years and years and years. And it slipped through my hands and I never saw it. And when it came out with 88, I thought, I've got to see this movie. But unfortunately, it just didn't give as much as I thought it was going to do. The, the bloke, the swamp thing, the special effects, they're okay, but he does look like massively just like a man in a suit. Um, it's not as good as I thought it was going to be. It's not one of my favourite Wes Cravens, unfortunately, but uh, it's all right, but I expected more. So next up is The Creeps. Uh, There's another one I saw and it was cheap and I thought, well, it's 88. And I, I feel actually I can kind of get most 88 films and, and think that I'm going to have a good time with them. I did have a good time with this one as well. It's from, I'm going to say it's from uh, 1987. Wow, is that a misprint? Might not be. It's uh, no, it could be actually because this guy here has been in uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch quite a bit, and it's it's not a bad film actually. It's quite good. The special effects are pretty good. It's not brilliant, but it's very entertaining. I find found. The next one is one of my favourite ones in this whole eighty-eight range that they've brought out, and it is Eliminators. I remember getting this out at the uh, the video shop quite a few times. I've got to admit, and uh, loved it. Love everything about it. It's quite blatantly rip, ripping off uh, Robocop. It's got a lot of touches to other things as well. It's this um, this fella who's been turned into this sort of man mach war machine and he go tries to go back to his original makers and try and find out why what they did to him. And uh, It's a bit like Robocop in that respect and he's got like somebody that got this gang who take him up the river to um, find this, this uh, this fella, this scientist who's done this, and it's, I just think it's a brilliant film. I watched this with my wife and she really enjoyed it as well. And this slipcover is absolutely amazing. One of my favorite slipcovers, this. The next one is a really good film called The Dead Next Door. Now this is made on a shoestring budget, and I mean ultra low budget, but it's it's a really good movie, actually. It's it's a lot better than you would think. Um, you know, based on the fact that it's like zero budget, but they've done a lot, they've done as lot as they can for it. And you're going to give them um, some credence for what they what they try to achieve. Yeah, it's not the best of film, but um, it's it's quite entertaining in its own right. And I did think that I, I didn't think I was going to have as much fun with it as I did. But yeah, not a bad little watch. The next one is a classic, The Toxic Avenger. This is the original one. It's got a lovely case here, and I do think that um, 
88 films we're going to work with HMV and we're going to put these out as exclusives for the first four, well the four films in Troma's uh, Toxic Avenger series. Unfortunately they only got to like the second one on a slipcover and then the sort of drop the slipcover thing and the, the whole HMV exclusive bit which is a bit of a shame because I want to collect the whole lot even though three and four aren't the best versions of it and um, so but this one by far is the best one it's quite nasty in a way as well Toxic Avenger 2 and um, like I say I was going to con continue to do this um to get this set but just couldn't progress any further than these two unfortunately but uh, these these two for me are the best two out of the uh, the series they're just such so much fun like i say that's a little bit nasty that one this one's more like slapstick and i think they get more like that as it go along so the last title in this uh, section is creepshow 2. this one for me is, is a lovely cover and i do think that creepshow 2 although i've got it on arrow as well this is like a rare double dip and um it's i need to get these these this watched because uh, this one's got a lovely print on it mind arrow one has as well um I think you can get this quite cheap as well, but uh, the Kipshow one does need to get a release in the UK, but of course it does. And uh, I do need to go and revisit these these two. Uh, I'm going to wait till Kipshow two Kipshow one comes out, and then I can watch the two of them together. Although I don't need to actually, as it is. But uh, I do think I'll enjoy this one more than the first one. Okay, so that's it for this part of the shelf. I look forward to doing another part, which is going to be this. I'm going to start here. I don't think for any. I can get the whole lot of this collection in because there's about 60 titles in there but i'll see if i can do it in two parts okay so thanks for watching you take care and i'll see you next time cheers